Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from Bex and Books, and today I'm really excited because I got tagged in the coloring scare tag. Yeah, so I was tagged by Tamara's Coloring Coven and Louise Coloring 41. So thank you guys for tagging me. This is really exciting. So um, I'm actually going to be working on my advent calendar from um, Evil Chibi by Abby Dev. I've been working on a picture a day and then posting on my Instagram because I'm counting down to Halloween. So this is so much fun. Really exciting. So today I'm doing the uh, brain sponge cake, I guess. I don't know. I guess we'll go with that. But yeah, so I have the list of questions right here. And I guess we'll just kind of go with it. I tried not to um, think about them too much beforehand or really look at them beforehand too much. So I can kind of, I know what the first one is, but the rest of them, you know, I try not to, you know, think about them too much or look at them too much. So let's just see what happens. What a disaster this might be. <laughs> All right, here we go. So question number one, what weapon would you choose if you're living in the walking dead okay so i haven't watched the walking dead in years i don't even know if it's still in the air but i'm gonna kind of play by my own rules a little bit here because you know me i march to be my own drum um i'm thinking okay the walking dead is a fictional world right i mean it's a fake world that was created so why do we necessarily have to use a weapon that is real that is, you know, in the real world. Why can't we use a weapon from another fictional or fake world? So my answer to that is going to be a lightsaber. <laughs> because obviously you don't want to use something where you're going to run out of stuff. Like you don't want to use a gun, you're going to run out of ammo. But with a lightsaber, you're not running out of anything ever. That bad boy is ready to go all the time. And that kyber crystal is not going anywhere. So I know I just went super nerd, but that is definitely what I, I would use. You know, you push a button, it's ready to go. You know, those zombies are like basically dust anyway. So it's going to be really easy to just, you know, go right through their heads or chop their heads off and, uh, with a lightsaber. So yeah, I'll say a purple one, a purple lightsaber. So, but for those of you who are sticklers, I'll go with a katana as a real world weapon. I'll use, I would use a katana. Just something that you wouldn't have to keep, you know, ammo or, you know, that was only temporary. <clears throat> but really I'm going with a lightsaber. So <laughs> there we go. Question number two, if you were paid to spend the night in a haunted house, would you, and how much would you, how much would they have to pay you? Um, I'm going to say no amount of money in the world is going to get me to spend the night in a truly haunted house because I'd be one of those people that would go in there, go to sleep, and some kind of something would attach to me and I'd end up bringing it home with me and end up having to have my house blessed and who knows what because that's just the kind of luck I have. So yeah, no, um, no amount of money for a haunted house. Um, number three, what superstition or urban legend do you believe? Now, I wouldn't say I'm superstitious. I am a little stitious. If you know what that's from, leave me a fist bump in the comments. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Don't say, just leave me a fist bump and we'll know. I know that you know and you know that I know, so. But anyway, um, really, I'm not really like superstitious, but one of them I do believe in and I don't mess around with is the Ouija board. I'm, no, I've heard too many stories. Um, people talk about things like after using that thing, like having bad things happen to them, weird stuff starts happening in their house. Um, even if they don't live in the house, bad things start happening in their life and stuff like that. Like... I don't know. I, I think if you're going to quote unquote commune with the dead or try to open up something that shouldn't be opened up, then uh, you might not always like what you get coming out. So I don't do Ouija boards. I would never do one. I've just heard 
too many crazy stories about that. So I will pass on the Ouija board. Um, number four, which horror movie did you never get over? It. I saw the original It. <laughs> I think I was a teenager. Yeah, I was a teenager. I would say between the ages 15, 14, 15, 16, something like that. And I never got over that movie. And that movie actually gave me a clown phobia, like legit clown phobia. And you see this right here? Yeah, I know. I colored that yesterday. Um, two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do that. <laughs> yeah, I never got over it. I will not watch that movie. I will not watch any horror movie where there's a clown as the killer, or, you know, any kind of creepy, scary clowns. I, I will not do that. Also, I will not watch, just to throw this in there, I will not watch possession movies. I saw The Exorcist once, and I will never watch The Exorcist again, ever, or any type of possession movie, because I believe in possession, and I, mm -mm, that's not for me. So, yeah, those are my movies. What is your favorite scary and or Halloween coloring books? Um, to be honest, I don't really have very many Halloween coloring books. I would say I have the Hannah Lynn coloring book, um, Halloween coloring book. I have the Jasmine Beckett Griffith Halloween coloring book. Then I have Evil Chibi here. Um, honestly, I, I can't say because when I do my... In past years, when I've done my Halloween coloring, I would usually do it out of a book I already have, like um, like Romantic Country or things like that, where it just had like Halloween scenes and things like that. So I really, I really can't say what my favorite one. If I had to choose one that was just I thought was the absolute cutest and I used the most, it would be Hannah Lynn's Halloween coloring book. But I'm liking this one though. I'm liking this advent calendar. I'm having a lot of fun with this. So, um, The next one. What is the scariest book you've ever read? Um, other than like a geometry book. <laughs> um, I would say... I don't really read a lot of horror, like the horror genre, but I have read a few and two that had my heart racing to where, and at points I was actually sweating. Um, one was Bird Box. Don't compare it to the movie. If you saw the movie Bird Box, that, mm -mm, I'm talking about the book Bird Box. That was an experience. So if if you're a reader and you've seen the movie that came out on Netflix and you haven't read the book, then you need to read the book because you're doing yourself a disservice by thinking Bird Box is what the what the movie was. No, the movie was crap. The book was awesome. I would say Bird Box. And another one, this one is a sci-fi horror and it's called Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. And this is about... Um, um, a boat is kind of like missing, like the people aren't responding, so they send another ship out there into the Marianas Trench, which is like the deepest part of the ocean, and it's about mermaids, but we're not talking like Ariel here. We're talking about legit, scary, crazy, vicious mermaids, and that book was scary <laughs> the way things were described just it was it was crazy that that book was crazy I, I never thought of mermaids really the same way again after reading um, into the drowning deep so if you like sci-fi horror then I highly highly recommend that book it was awesome so uh, yeah those are two books that actually you know made me sweat <laughs> while reading them um, if you could be a scary monster, which one would you be? Okay, scary monster. So, 
I don't know what really counts as like there are so many scary monsters. I mean, you have mythology, you have literature, you have movies. Um, I think I would be a siren because a siren, first of all, you get to be beautiful because sirens are beautiful. Um, you get to hang out by the ocean all day. You get to have a beautiful singing voice. And you just get people to crash their ships onto the shore and then you get treasure. I mean, that's pretty awesome if you think about it. So, yeah. I know they're not exactly like your typical scary, super scary monster. But still, when you think about actually the the mythology behind them and what they do by luring ships to crash and, you know, killing, I guess, all the people on board or whatever. I wouldn't do that. I would just, you know, keep any kind of cool treasure. But yeah, they're, they're actually pretty scary. And sirens, sirens are different from mermaids. So yeah, that's your science lesson for today, kids. <laughs> um, where is the scariest place you've ever been? Um, the gynecologist <laughs> oh god um never mind just forget i said that um <laughs> i honestly this one is the one when i saw this one i had to think about the hardest and think about the most because i honestly that's actually the first thing that came to my head was the gynecologist but I honestly cannot think of anywhere where it's the scariest place I've ever been. I've been to places where they've said it was a haunted place, um, you know, haunted tours and stuff like that, but I've never, I've personally never been scared to the point where I was like really scared. So as far as a scary place, I. I really don't have an answer for that I I don't so I'm gonna go with the gynecologist because you know ladies you know the first time you go that is some that's some scary stuff right there <laughs> so but seriously I, I can't think of anywhere super scary that I've ever been to where I can I still think about it or you know anything like that so sorry are you scared of the dark? And if so, what scares you the most about the dark? I am not scared of the dark. I like the dark. Um, I like it to be very dark when I'm sleeping. Um, I don't like a lot of light. I don't like night lights. The only place I put night lights are like in the bathroom in case you have to get up in the middle, middle of the night and go to the bathroom. But that's it. Um, I'm not scared of the dark. Um, I like being outside in the dark in our backyard. Um, yeah, so it doesn't, the dark doesn't bother me. So, not scared of the dark. Okay, number 10. Do you go to the toilet with the lights on or off after a scary movie? And if you have a closet, would you have to have the door fully closed to sleep? I never <laughs> go to the toilet with the lights off. And that is because I have this irrational fear that one day if I lift the toilet lid, I'm going to see like a giant spider or a lizard or a snake or something in the toilet. And I just, no, no. I always have to make sure that the toilet bowl is clear before I, <laughs> before I use it. I don't know where that came from. It may have been something I saw as a kid. I don't know, but that's just this fear of mine. Because when you're on like public, like the public sewage, they talk about like things down in the sewer and sometimes they can like come up in your pipes. And I've seen things where people have actually found like snakes and stuff in their toilet bowls. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. No. I don't care if the power is out. I will take a flashlight. I will take a candle. I will do whatever I have to do to make sure I can check that toilet bowl before my butt goes on it. Because, mm, -mm. <laughs> I don't mess around with that. That freaks me out. So... And the other part was, um, if you have a closet, would you have to have the door fully closed to sleep? No. Um, actually, I, I keep our closet door open when we sleep anyway. Um, 
But the main reason for that is because we have like a, a big walk-in closet and it actually has its own vent in there. So I keep it open for the circulation. So no, that never bothers me. Um, so yeah. Uh, number 11. Do you prefer to watch scary movies with others or alone? Um, either or. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I like to watch them obviously with friends or my husband and stuff because you know it's always fun to watch scary movies with your with your friends or family members just to see how everybody reacts differently people getting scared and you know stuff like that but i know i'm supposed to be coloring i'm sorry but um yeah i'll i probably prefer just for the fun factor of it to do it um with other people but i i don't have a problem watching scary movies by myself so I will do that, but definitely if I have to choose, I'm going to stay with others just because it's fun to watch scary movies with your friends so you can make fun of them when they get scared. <laughs> um, number 12, do you want to be a vampire, zombie, or werewolf and why? Um, let's see. Well, with the vampire thing, of course, we get the eternal life um, so you, and you kind of get to stay young forever as long as you're turned when you're young um, with I don't think anybody would want to be a zombie you're just walking around brainless and no no zombie definitely not werewolf they're not exactly cute pretty hairy um, I think I'm gonna go with werewolf and the reason I'm gonna say that is because if you're a vampire you're gonna be a vampire all the time and you're gonna have to sleep during the day and stuff werewolves you're technically only a werewolf on the full moon so the rest of the month you're good so you would only really have to worry about being a werewolf um, a couple of days or a few days out of the month and if you're a woman, you, you're kind of <laughs> know what that's like anyway <laughs> to turn into a monster <laughs> every month. So kind of already used to that. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with werewolf. And I would be a nice, I'd be a nice werewolf. I'd be the type of person that would lock myself up to make sure I didn't hurt anybody or anything or do something stupid. So yeah, werewolf. Um, number 13. Would you participate in the zombie run, which is a city event, which is like a fun run? If so, would you be a zombie or a runner? I would definitely participate if I could be a zombie. That sounds like so much fun to be a zombie in one of those. Um, I wouldn't be a runner because number one, I don't run. <laughs> and <laughs> it's too much exercise for me. And number two, um, I don't like being chased. I would probably legit have a panic attack or something thinking I'm going to die. So, well then I might end up winning the race actually. I don't know. Anyway, but I think it'd be fun to be the zombie. And um, I like, um, you know, doing makeup and dressing up. And I like doing stuff to where you can do the makeup, you know, to make it like you have like blood or you know, scars on your face and things like that. And I, I think it'd be fun too to just dress up or do the makeup like a zombie. So yeah, I would definitely do that as a zombie. Um, number 14, do you prefer gory creepy or cute and spooky? Well, I guess that depends on what we're talking about. Um, when it comes to movies and books, I would definitely prefer gory creepy um when it comes to coloring books which is probably the most important here i would like cute and spooky because i don't know i just like coloring cute things like what i'm coloring now it's a brain with blood you know but it's not so bad but yeah i wouldn't like to have to color like a lot of like guts and gore and stuff like that so yeah with coloring books definitely um, cute and spooky, but with books and movies, 
creepy and gory. Um, number 15, what scares you the most about being home alone? Um, somebody actually knocking on the door, <laughs> ringing the doorbell. Um, I love being home alone. I'm an introvert, so I love that. But if I'm home alone and I hear somebody knock on the door and I'm not expecting anyone, I don't go to the door. I don't know why, even if it's in the middle of the day, the middle of the afternoon, bright and sunny outside, if I'm here by myself and somebody knocks, mm -mm, they're just out of luck. I'm not going to the door. So yeah, that kind of, I don't know, that kind of freaks me out a little bit because you just never know. I've seen a lot of horror movies like that where they're just like, come in, or they just go to the door and they're like, hold on, I'll be there in a second. I'm like, you don't even know who's there. At least check and see who's there before you open the door. So yeah, I don't like being uh, home alone and having somebody knock on the door or ring the doorbell. Um, number 16, would you rather walk through a cornfield or a forest in dark? A forest. I am not walking through a cornfield. I am claustrophobic. And I feel like I would lose my mind. I don't necessarily think it's a great idea to walk in the forest either. Number one, I'm pretty clumsy. So I'll probably end up with a sprained ankle or a broken foot or something over tripping over a tree trunk. Also, you know, we do have wildlife that I don't necessarily want to come in contact with. But cornfield, it's really thick. You're not going to get a lot of light. And it, ugh, it feels suffocating. Whereas in a forest, if if the moon's out that night, you're going to get some light, you know, and it, you're not going to feel suffocated and stuff like that. So I'd rather be in a forest. Number 17, if you can make a magic potion, what would it do and what ingredients would it take to make it? Um, if I can make a magic potion, it would be... A potion that would give me the metabolism I had when I was 16 so I pretty much never put on any weight and can eat whatever I want and never ever 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 gain a pound ever and um, and wouldn't have to exercise either it's just eat what you want never gain weight perfect um, Let's see, the ingredient, I'd probably make it up like a, like a milkshake, so I'd have like some low-fat brownies, some non-fat yogurt, stuff like that, like all these little goodies and treats, but you know, in their non-fat form, and just make it up like a milkshake and just drink it so it's still kind of good, and that's it. That's what I would use. Maybe put some food coloring in it to make it kind of pretty some uh, purple food coloring or something like that so it actually looks like a potion that's special <laughs> but yeah never gain weight dream come true um what was your favorite halloween costume of all time um i remember i was rainbow bright as a kid but that wasn't my favorite because that was like back in the 80s when they gave you those horrible plastic masks that you wore over your face with just the rubber band holding it on and you couldn't freaking breathe and you were like sweating and you couldn't see. These were horrible. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. I don't know why we thought it was a good idea at kids. Those were terrible. Um, I think my favorite Halloween costume would be uh, when I was about... 16 or 17 my friend had a Halloween party and I dressed up as um, Esmeralda from the Hunchback of Notre Dame or Notre Dame um, for the Disney cartoon so I dressed up like her because I have the dark hair and the dark eyes and stuff like that and the reason I liked it so much is because um, because of my dark hair and my dark eyes and after I got finished I got to do do like winged eyeliner and stuff like that I loved playing around with the makeup I I was pretty spot-on so nobody really had to ask me who or what I was it was like crazy 
how similar it came out and how similar I ended up looking. I think Esmeralda might have green eyes though. That may be the difference. But yeah, I like that. It was a lot of fun. I think I like that one the best is because um, of the makeup. I liked playing around with the makeup to make it, you know, to do the winged eyeliner and, you know, just fun makeup stuff. I like doing that. It's one of the reasons I like Halloween is I like, you know, being able to do like crazy makeup and things like that. So, all right, number 19, next to last. Who would you rather have as a friend? Michael Myers, Pennywise, Alien, Predator, or Freddy Krueger, and why? Okay, Pennywise is a big no. No, no, no. Um, Michael Myers. Oh, Predator. Predator. Yeah. I don't know why. Absolutely, 100% Predator. Um, first of all, he's freaking huge. Have you seen him? He's huge. <laughs> he's like eight feet tall. Nobody's going to mess with you when Predator is your friend, you know? He has heat vision, so nobody's ever sneaking up on you because he's going to see anybody sneaking up on you because he's going to sense their body heat, you know? And if they do try to sneak up on you, he has all his crazy alien weapons and stuff. He'll just blast them. Um, and he's just intimidating looking. So, yeah. And when he has his mask on, he's not really scary looking. And his hair looks really cool. I don't know if you know how Predator looked, but he actually, like, he had, like, dreadlocks and stuff. I know that was part of his alien look. It wasn't hair, but I always, as a kid, thought he had dreadlocks. So, yeah, he's cool looking. And I feel like he'd be a really good listener for some reason. I think it might be because he's just, he wears the mask and he doesn't talk. So I feel like he's somebody I could really talk to and he'd listen. Plus, piggyback rides on Predator. I mean, that would be so fun. So yeah, definitely Predator. <laughs> this is going somewhere. I don't, I don't know what's happening. It's been a while since I filmed a video. So I'm kind of losing it a little bit. But anyway, so now we're at 20. Who are the three people you would like to participate in the coloring scare tag? So... I am going to tag Chelsea Jade Murray, um, Camille's Coloring Mania, and Norma Jean Color With Me. Those are my three that I am going to tag. And I hope they have as much fun with it as I did. I hope they have much better <laughs> answers than I did. Um, yeah, but I hope they enjoy it. This this really was fun, um, and I appreciate um, Louise and Tamara tagging me. So I thought that was really nice, and I appreciate them. But um, I'm gonna everybody I mentioned, I'm gonna link all their YouTube channels below, so you can go check any of them out if you've never checked them out before. So yeah, that is my coloring scare tag. This is looking crazy. Okay, I've got some work to do. But anyway, that was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all don't think I'm even crazier than what you already thought I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have some more videos planned. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram because I try to keep, uh, just try to stay updated over there. Plus, I'm sharing each one of my pictures that I color each day for the advent calendar. So yeah, um, you can keep up with me a lot more on Instagram and know what's going on. And that will be linked in the description box, as well as everybody's YouTube channel, as well as the coloring book I'm working in, which is Evil Chibi by Abby Dev. I'll link that as well. So yeah, that was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And you can let me know some of the, your answers, if you agree. If you disagree with some of my answers, be like, what? Why would you pick Predator? Let me know who you pick, you know? It's a lot of fun. We can talk about it. Let's chat about it. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, please consider subscribing if you aren't subscribed. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye, guys.